Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Biff Rugby League podcast. I think it's episode 14 or 15. Um, it's been a few weeks that we've been away, but I'd like to apologise. I had a birthday, the lads are away for a bit, and we've just sort of things got in the way, but we've got plenty to talk about, and we're going to crack straight on. Um, first of all, how are we all? Are we okay? Have we had a good couple of couple of weeks off? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Um, had a nice trip down to Toby's homeland. Uh, saw, saw the Welsh Dragon and then came back up. Yeah, and I've gone the opposite, <laughs> to an opposite Celtic country. I've gone and visited Scotland. Um, I should have gone and checked out the uh, Strathmore <laughs> Silverback while I was there, but uh, I sadly didn't. I just went to see the sort of main types in Glasgow. Yeah, it's been it's been fun, but um, yeah, I feel like we missed quite a big week last week with it being the lead up to the uh, Combined Nations All Stars game. Yeah, it certainly did. I mean, with the announcement of Jermaine McGilvery, we'll get into it all a bit later on. But obviously, McGilvery's retired. They've they've got the revenge over the All Stars. Uh, England women have played two games since we last met. Two wins: one against Wales, one against France. The wheelchair team have beaten the world number one French team. Wales have played France, uh, I think, in France this week. They've obviously, unfortunately, lost. Scotland and Ireland haven't had many games, but the women's Ireland team have played Italy. So there's been plenty of fixtures, plenty of rugby league being played. Um, State of Origin kicked off. Queensland get taken a surprising 1-0 lead after a first game. But um, I think the biggest news of all over the last couple of weeks is going to come from yourself, Toby. So if you want to just let the viewers know what's happened for you, you can. You can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, so I, uh, I popped into the Discord um, <laughs> literally just before we and I went, boys, I've got some news, I now have a girlfriend, and the reason I had to tell that is because for the first half of this season, Brad and <laughs> have wanted to have a about triple dates, at the <laughs> and I haven't been able to be part of it, so maybe you'll see six of us at a Major final near you. In the <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it should it should be a good one. I mean, I'm really happy for you. We've been we've been pestering you for a while. Like you kept going on about <laughs> texting people and maybe going out for drinks with people. And we were like, mate, just do it. You have got nothing to lose. Like da 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 da. Get yourself out there. And you just you just didn't want to do it. And we were like, ah. Oh. And then you finally you've had this couple of weeks off. You've you've sort of refreshed yourself. You've moved rooms. It looks like you're in a bathroom, but. <laughs> Sleeping upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> no, she, she's she's already she's already kicked you out of the room. Like that's horrible. Um, but no, you're not the only one that's found love or looking for love in the world of rugby league. This um, over the last one, obviously, Jax O'Neill's the the five foot eleven. Not so, apparently, um, a lot of his teammates are thinking he's a little bit shorter than that. Um, but the, the the former cast or the current sort of cast player. Um, 29 game Super League player. I think he's played over 30 league games for for Cass, and he's he's in Love Island. So alongside the daughter of for those football fans out there, alongside the daughter of Michael Owen, Gemma Owen, like some proper sporty people out there on Love Island this week. Um, Robin, you're definitely not watching it. The look on your face says you don't know what a clue we're going on about. But I know Toby's watched it because he's got a missus now. <laughs> But, you know, they throw so much on social media. <laughs> you know what's going on secretly, don't you? But, yeah. <laughs> I'm all caught up, mate. I watch it. I try and watch it religiously at nine o'clock. I mean, we won't be watching it tonight. I'll have to catch up on tonight's episode as of recording. But fair play to the lad. He's gone in there. He's realised, look, I've got nothing to lose. He's, he's been he's not played for, I think, over a year because of, I think, hamstring reattachment surgery. So let him do what he wants to do. And if it means that he's going to promote the game of rugby league, like even just twofold, then mate, go for it. Like you, he's bringing a lot of positive energy. He's not being the dickhead out there. So fair play to the lad. Like go, go and do what you want to do. I'm happy for him. Go on, Jack. <laughs> Up the jacks. Um, yeah. But yeah, on a, on a bit more of a serious note, obviously it's international round. We've just had our international round. The NRL are going to go into theirs. They're going to have round two of um, state of origin coming up. The first thing I want to mention is what do we make of the Sean Wayne comment? Like we've picked our England squad and obviously we're going to have to make a few changes to that, but we won't do that this week. What do we make of Sean Wayne's comments that he's still got 10 or so spots available in his squad? Yeah, it's not surprising based on the team he actually picked for uh, the weekend's game against the Combined Nations. Um, yeah, I think there was quite 
It's quite a shock that there was players featuring for combined nations like Donald Clark um, instead of featuring for England. Um, I've seen some things which said Cruz Lehman was one of the best players on the pitch. Um, I've seen on Twitter. Um, not sure I agree, but hmm. anyway. No, he. Um, I mean, he played. He played well, but I wouldn't have gone that far. Yeah, but yeah. So I guess he's sort of been left. He, he's picked a squad which I think nobody would have predicted he picked, and they've performed reasonably well. Um, considering like sort of how Jake Wardle's played and things like this. Um, and yeah, I think it's almost a position where he's picked players who he thinks might be World Cup ready, and yeah. it's worked well for him. And now he's got to make the decision between the players who we know are good and the players who potentially could be the difference between winning the World Cup and finishing second, third or fourth. But yeah. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I'm, I'm just going to sort of go through the team that we picked a few weeks ago. Uh, if I can find it. I don't have it anymore, which is... Oh, no, it'll be in recently deleted. There we go. Uh, do I have it? There we go. Uh, so we have Tompkins, McGilvray, Gildart, Farnworth, who looks like he's going to pick up an injury. And obviously, McGilvray's now retired. So they're two spots we're going to have to sort of look into and sort of see. We said we were a bit short at centre when we discussed the team a few weeks ago. Uh, Jake Wardle's definitely thrown his hand up. Uh, Callum Watkins just obviously put himself out there to be picked in the squad now. And I mean, it was a player that I think we should have taken anyway. Uh, Makinson, we had Connor, Hastings, obviously in the NRL, Thompson in the NRL. Daryl Clark, not picked, played for the Combined Nations. McLaurin played instead for the first time since, I think it was, I think it's a 2013. Uh, Wormsley was one of the best players on the park for me, one of the Saints guys. Quite a lot of them Saints lads played really, really well. Um, Bateman and Farrell, Sutton, obviously NRL. Wellsby started, in, I believe, in the halves. Look, didn't didn't look like he was he was out of touch. The, the the player that surprised me though was George Williams. Like for me, I think it's going to have to be Hastings and potentially Williams in that half back. Like you could have what like Williams at six, Hastings at seven, and that, that could potentially work. Robin, were you surprised to see how well Williams played despite the fact he's been underperforming in that Warrington side this year? Yeah, it was it was weird, wasn't it? Um, I guess uh, I I don't know. I feel like he's he's been underperforming all year at Warrington. And then this is his sort of first opportunity to do something a bit different. So, like, we know his class. We've we've spoken about him. Toby Toby loves him. We've seen great stuff from him. Maybe um, maybe it's more of a reflection of his motivation levels, what's yeah. going on at Warrington. And, and, you know, he's got that connection with Sean Wayne already. So maybe he knows how to unlock that extra level from him. So, yeah, I, I think he's definitely he's, he's made a good case for... Um, picking him at six for the World Cup we'll have to see how, how he goes if he has um, you know if he turns a corner or if he stays the same it's a, it's a bit of a gamble but if anyone can can get the most out of him then it, it clearly is Sean Wayne yeah definitely I mean I think here we're looking at the players that got named as debutant, uh, debutants for, for England you had Joe Batchelor, Matty Lees Jack Wellsby and Jake Wardle. So three Saints players there on debut. Other than Jack Wellsby, do you think Joe Batchelor and Matty Lees are going to be able to do enough to take to take spots off the like of Sutton, Thompson, Whitehead, like the lads that are playing out there out there in Australia, or do you, do you not think they're going to be able to do that? No, I think I think this was maybe play them all, and whoever does best is the backup sort of situation. I think they they're quite a way off the caliber of those players in the NRL and the and those NRL players will just fit straight into the first team but I think this was a test of who's best of the rest and who do we take as um, maybe a bench or a rotation yeah you know, just to, to add depth to the team yeah um, and Toby yourself sort of moving away from England and and looking at Wales the first Wales game since 2018 um and rust, Wales looked a little bit rusty. Uh, they shouldn't look rusty, should they, really? Because these players are playing every week for no matter what team. Like All these lads are playing. And I know there was a lot of lads not available. Um, so I believe there was no Regan Grace, no Gil Dudson. But was it was it a little bit of a disappointing performance from you? From your point of view? Um, you always expect to lose to France, I think, when you're in the position of Wales. Um, so I guess it's not the most disappointing result that I could have asked for. Um, it's still frustrating, I think. Um, you know, I mean, things like Caitlin Bacon's didn't play. Um, mm. 
and that like that's one player I'm really, I was really excited having around the Wales squad. I don't know whether he sort of had a last minute injury or type thing because I think he he was named in the um, in the sort of extended squad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's um, it's a little bit frustrating because it feels a bit same old, same old. Um, a little bit. Um, you know, we haven't had an international, I don't think, for about three years. Um, and then this is sort of, you know, the squad's just not not ready to sort of, hasn't had any time to be together, not ready to sort of be playing competitive games, I don't think. Um, and then, yeah, just in general, uh, there's a huge struggle at half-back. Um, mm. I think, what, I think the half-back pairing was like Elliot Keir and Matty Fozard or something. So a full-back, a full-back or a centre and a hooker in the halves and yeah it's just um, it's just a bit messy like there's just not Wales seems to make props and wingers and that's that's their speciality so a bit, I think it's a bit, a bit frustrating that the sort of holes have been identified over a three well three four year period um, and, you know and there hasn't been some sort of development work done towards making sure that the squad's stronger but um, you know, it's to say we'll see what happens. We'll see if Tyson Frizzell ends up putting his hand up for us again and changes everything. Yeah, and, and yeah, exactly. I mean, he's not been named in any. Has he been named in the New South Wales squad again this week? I'm not sure if he has. But if he hasn't, then you kind of have to look at that and go, okay, if he's not playing Origin, he's not going to be playing for Australia. And if he isn't going to be playing for Australia he's not going to be playing at the World Cup. And a player like Tyson Frizzell, who has happily represented Wales in the past and is, is should should realistically be happy to put his hand up again. I mean, James Tedesco isn't the type of player that would turn down playing for Italy if all of a sudden he wasn't picked for for, for Australia. And I don't think I don't think other players out there would turn, their, turn down playing for any country at the World Cup. So in your eyes, do you, do you, would you like to see the likes of him and Bradman Best and maybe like Harry Smith put their hand up and go, look, Let's play for Wales while we're at this level. And if we end up being good enough that we can play for the team we really want to play for, then fine. Or do you want them to play for Wales and only ever play, only play for Wales? If, or do you want them just to say, if they're going to do that, don't play? Yeah. We give a Tyson Frizzell where he plays Wales in 2013 and then 2017 he's good enough for Australia. Yeah. I think what annoys me is he doesn't play... Well, is like I want him to play in the qualifiers for the World Cup. Yeah. I want him to play in the European Nations trophy at the end of the year um, if he's going to play for us in the World Cup and that's where for me it's like if, if you don't play if you don't play the internationals outside of the World Cup mm. then you're not part of the squad culture um, you're only playing to say that you've played in the World Cup and that's where it's different for me but I will happily have anyone play for Wales I just want them to say as long as I'm not in my preferred nation squad which let's be honest the only nations which would you'd be in instead would be Australia, New Zealand, England, and Tonga. Yeah. Um, and yeah, then happily let them play for whatever. I just want them to be committed to the end of every international window, not just the end of a World Cup year. Yeah, I mean, um, I think the reason he can't, someone like the, the NRL lads can't play for Wales in the qualifiers is because the way it, it links up with the NRL season, a lot of those games are played sort of mid season. But then lads, they let lads go and play for like Malta and stuff like that during the off season. So. When what Wales the qualifiers realistically in my opinion should be played now they should all be played over this couple of weeks we should have a couple of weeks off get the inter get some proper midsummer internationals being played and then go and have and like have a little mini sort of we could have a Pacific tournament you could have the, you could bring the Tri Nations back you could have a like a home nations tournament you could have Ireland Scotland Wales and France play each other because you know England England Australia and New Zealand are going to have their Tri Nations thing. Um, and that's why I think we had great great Britain in there, but I don't know if we should even keep that. I know it came back only a few years ago, but let's get rid of that already. Like I'm not bothered. Like I don't think many people are that bothered about it. Um, I think we should stick with our, our home nations. Um, it's a shame. I feel like I feel like you should have had like Harry Harry uh, Harry Smith and Lewis Dodd play. Um, as you know, I think Morgan Knowles was. Is was Morgan Knowles in the squad for you, or was he picked in the England squad? No, Morgan Knowles basically said. I think when I'm sure Wayne took over, he was like, I really want you to be a. An England player and Morgan Knowles was like, yeah, say no more, I'm in. Yeah. Uh, but they didn't get into the England squad, I don't think, but there we go. So, but yeah, that's, I can understand why, why sort of players want to play internationally, but then are, are like, they feel like they might be a little bit ready to play a bit higher up. And then when they don't get that opportunity, they kind of feel a little bit silly being told, okay, you kind of have to play 
back down and they don't want to take that step back down because maybe their egos are a little bit too big. I don't know. Would you see, do you think that's sort of how it sits? I don't know. It's like, I, I can't, as, as you know, we're, we're just fans, aren't we? So hmm. it's, a, it's miles away from, from the decision that we would have to make. But I don't understand why a player wouldn't go to the World Cup, no matter who's offering you a spot. Why wouldn't you go and play in a World Cup? So, um, I, I, if Morgan Knowles doesn't play for England, I, I, you know, I, I don't. He's not. He's, yeah. He's only doing himself a disservice by putting his ego first and saying, "I don't want to play for Wales." You, you're better off getting an international cap. That's gonna do you more favours when you go when you go and try test the market at another club. Yeah, hundred percent. The other thing is, with, like with you were saying with Tyson Frizzell not playing the qualifiers. I think that's. I think you're right. I think that's a bit unfair. But at the same time, um, from a from a Wales pers- perspective, Tyson Purcell is going to turn up and, and play. Mm. Whereas if you can play your qualifiers with uh, other players, so non Tyson Purcells, then they get an opportunity to play international games as well. So it kind of yeah works both ways. That that would be fairer on the other te- on the players that would lose out to Tyson Purcell if he yeah. turned up. Yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, something that sort of caught my eye this week is the Daniel Tupo sort of saga. Like, the, the, they mentioned at the start of, uh, before Origin Game 1, that both Daniel Tupo and Katoni Staggs were not going to be available for Game 2 of Origin for New South Wales because they were likely to play for Tonga because they've committed to Tonga for the World Cup. Katoni Staggs has been dropped because he didn't play very well. He was injured. Fine, I understand that. Daniel Tupo has been named in two squads to play this weekend. He's been played, been named in the Tonga squad to play against New Zealand, and he's been named in the New South Wales squad in the five shirt to play against Queensland. If you were in his situation, knowing that you're playing for Tonga at the World Cup, what would you do? Yeah, play for Tonga. Yeah. If you know, if 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 Tonga's the nation that you're happy to represent, and like I think, if he was offered Australia or Tonga, he would pick Tonga. Yeah. Then it's like he, yeah, he pick he you pick Tonga in New South Wales. What I would understand is if Tonga were his second nation behind Australia, mm. but then he picks New South Wales. But yeah, it's um it's quite funny. It's almost quite comes across as that like arrogance against internationals again, doesn't it? Yeah. That you know we're a better competition than internationals as, as an NRL or whatever, or State of Origin is a better product than than internationals because they're basically trying to stop players accessing. Uh, a development international effectively for Tonga although they're already fully developed you know but yeah I mean the, the, the Tonga team is arguably the strongest team in World Rugby League in terms of international level when you look at the sort of the names I'm going to net they haven't announced who's going to be playing who's going to be starting where but you go through there you've got Daniel Tupai you've got uh, Talakai uh, Katoa Staggs is in there Takiaho Havili Fanua Blake uh, Tupanua, uh, Kloa Matangi, Tamalolo, uh, Pangai Jr., Totola, Fotueka, Will Penasini's in there, uh, Ofehe Ngawi, Toa, Andrew Fafita. Like, there's, that's just a hand, that's just like, I've, I've missed out a good six or seven players there, like Moses. There's a, that's a stupidly strong team. But then you go and name and look at the New Zealand side, and you're naming Asofa uh, Solomona, uh, the Bromwich brothers, Dylan Brown. Fisher Harris, Peter Hicku, Jerome Hughes, uh, Joseph Manu, one of the best centres in World Rugby League, uh, Joseph Tarpane, Watini Lezlegsnap, Brandon Hooker, probably the best hooker in World Rugby League. Like that, That's probably the best team. I know Australia are ranked world number four, but they're the two best teams in World Rugby League at the minute. Do, do those teams make the World Cup final? Is that is that the World Cup final preview already? Or is that... Is that a little bit too early to predict? Yeah, it's too early to predict. One of Sean Wayne England's going to be very solid defensively and he's going to give both those teams a very good effort. Um, I think, two, um, you know, I think it's going to come down to draws as well um, and how teams face each other on through the bracket, um, which could sort of mess things up a little bit for those teams. Mm. Um, also, like, and Australia are an, an unknown entity. Obviously, yeah. they've been unbeatable for eight years now. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of a you know, what? What would I say? Like, it's uh, they could just come back and hit and just be the best again. It could be Mamling, it could be a genius. I doubt it. 
but there's always that possibility I think so I don't think it's the World Cup final nailed on um, but it's very much the case where they are the two nations who actually they're, they're the two nations in the southern hemisphere that actually care about having a good World Cup mm. yeah 100% go on, to it, Rob, uh, go on Robin well, I was just going to throw something out there like if we had Tonga versus Queensland they are if we could if we could open up a series that gave New Zealand and, and Queensland and Tonga and New Zealand do you know if, if those four yeah. played each other or even you know like what why why don't why doesn't New South Wales and Queensland enter the World Cup like and we've just been off Australia and we just have those two two states I don't know if that would work. Like, I don't know how you would work that because then you'd be you'd have to kick out another team that would fully deserve to be there. Well, that's that's true. That's true. But I just <laughs> I'm just thinking of these curious ideas, and I'm also <laughs> thinking about state of origin of like you know, it's flying in the face of the international game, and it's all it's almost um, yeah. Um, it's it's it feels like it's given more of a priority by the NRL yeah than the international game because it's theirs, it's their product, but. You look at the actual like nations that are represented in the state of origin, and it's getting pretty diverse. Like we've got Tongans and New yeah. Zealanders have played in there all, for ages. So, like, what if they opened up the the eligibility for state of origin, and that became a bit more international? Like, do you know, like, yeah, we have, I mean, like, they, for example, I mean, they um, they have done that. Why why can't he be eligible to play in Origin or something like? That? Why can't we get a, a couple of English guys in there and, and like really open it out and turn it into more of a um, you know more of, more of like an identity of who who do you prefer you know people are pretty fifty fifty split you you, you yeah. like Queensland I, I I don't know why I like New South Wales people will naturally fall on one side or the other and you could you could build a quite a good competition that sort of you know Australia doesn't care about the international game so. Let's give it. Let's let's you know take turn the state of origin into that version of the international game just through the players that are that are playing in it. Yeah, I mean you can understand why you want why people would want to see that, but there's a lot of people that go if people are playing state. In my eyes, if you're playing state of origin, you should just commit to Australia now. Like that's the way it used to be, and fair enough. But that's the way it should be. But then because if that happens, your Tongans, your Samoans. The people that have committed to play for them countries, they should still commit to play for those countries. Like, Daniel Tupo and Katoni Staggs are only playing for Tonga because they're allowed to play State of Origin. Is If we were to, if they were to go back and say, okay, if you're playing State of Origin, you can only play for Australia, do those players then revert back to going, okay, we're only going to play for Australia again? Do the Tongans, the Samoans, the Fijians that can play, like Api Corusau, are they going to miss out on state of origin or are they going to commit to playing for their country like well, that's yeah, what that's the argument before three massive games every single year yeah whereas if you if you choose to play for tonga you might get one or two every single year and you might not yeah. get any so it wouldn't make any sense to for them to choose tonga obviously it makes sense from a you know their their pride in their nation and yeah, all these other things, but really, if you're looking at it objectively, you'd you'd take the three massive games a year over potential few games against, like you know, basically friendlies and stuff. Yeah, hundred percent. I totally agree. I'm just going to go through the New South Wales team and look at the the players that are not going to be playing for Australia this year. I'll do I'll do the Queensland one as well, but there's not as many. But Brian Toto is going to be playing for Samoa. I think Stephen Crichton will be playing for Samoa. Daniel Tupo will be playing for Tonga. Jerome Luai will be playing for um, Samoa. So that's four out of your back seven. Uh, Api Corusau is likely to play for Fiji. Um, I think I think Payne Haas could have Australia. He might also get Samoa, depending on what they want to do with their with their um, forward pack. Junior Paulo won't be playing for Australia. I don't think... Uh, Talakai is another one that's been named in that Tonga squad this weekend and said he's also been blamed in the New South Wales squad. Um, yeah, I think Vic, Victor Radley's been named as the 22nd man. Like, he's going to be playing for England come the World Cup. So, you might get you might get what you want, Robin. You might get an English international yeah, play, sta play State of Origin this year. Um, to me, 
that doesn't really make sense. Um, like Josh Papali, I think, will be playing for Australia, but he could easily, if he doesn't get selected, he, you know he'll be playing for Samoa uh, come the World Cup. Like Murray Taulangi is going to be playing for Samoa come the World Cup. Um, yeah, it doesn't... Valentine Holmes, if he's not picked for Australia, can go and play for the Cook Islands. Like, there's so many... They've got so much depth, the Australia team. I don't think the players that are playing State of Origin have to worry about it. But if they're going to play State of Origin, they probably have to put Australia first. And then if they're not selected, then the team, then the other teams get their say. But if they're going to play for their country, I don't, if they've said to them, oh, I want to play for Samoa, I want to play for Tonga, I don't think they should be allowed to play in the, in the State of Origin. Because to me, the State of Origin is Australia's best versus Australia's best. And that's not necessarily what we're getting. What happens when you get the situation like uh, you're born and grew up in Sydney, but both your parents are uh, Tongans? Then that, and then, then that's a choice that for you to make. I think you are you're eligible for both, and then you but you have to make a decision before before you play open age rugby. Like you can play as much junior rugby for state of origin and junior internationals as you like. Like that's fair enough, and that's what happens in rugby union. But once you've committed, I think you've got to commit. And if you want to change, you've got to do it by go and get residency or not playing for a year for a nation or you've got to go and play I think Jared Hayne did it I think he wanted to play for Fiji because he's eligible to play for Fiji so he went and played like on the seven circuit for Fiji so he could get picked for the Olympic team unfortunately he didn't get picked for the Olympic team but that's what he went and did so if you're gonna if you want to go and change your eligibility you've got to, you've, you've got to find a way to do it rather than just turn up at the start of the season and go in I want to play for them I want to play for them I want to play for them like I don't, I don't. You should. We we know you're not allowed to chop and change. And you, once you play for one tier one, you're not allowed to play for another. But I think once you've committed to a tier two nation, I don't think you should. I think it should be at least three years before you can move, or something. They've got to put a limit on it. You can't just jump back and forth. Yeah, I guess it's it's kind of it, it's kind of more it's telling that that um, Australia isn't prioritised as like the international squad because actually. Yeah. If, if Australia was prioritised, then the Australian national team would decide that they want mostly Australians in the origin side because yeah. that benefits them. So it's clear that actually the origin sits above the national side because the origin is teams are actually picking these non-Australians who aren't going to play for Australia, and that doesn't actually help Australian selectors. So that sort of is a symptom of the fact that origin is given a much higher priority than the actual Australian squad. Yeah, and I, but I think that's also because the the whale the sort of the origin system is not picked by the NRL. It's done by QRL and the new the New South Wales RL. I don't think that, and I don't know how it works. I don't think the NRL are in charge of the state of origin system. It's really confusing, like the way it yeah. works. Because I think if they were in charge, because I think this is what I mean. There's too many governing bodies, isn't there? Like we've got. We've got the RFL and we've got Super League, and yes, they're coming together. Fantastic news. But in Australia, you've got the NRL, and then you've got your each individual states that work inside that, but then they don't like sort of coexist with each other. And then on top of that, you've got the IRL. Like the IRL control all of international rugby league, but they're not. Then they they should be the ones making the decision. Like this week, they should be looking at the squads and going, "You've been named in two squads this week." we're going to take the the international game is higher so if you're named in the international squad you have to play the international game it's a higher it's it's to me yes it's a friendly but an international friendly should be seen as higher than state of origin even though we know the state of origin is the best rugby league series in the world no matter who you who you who you're including yeah you know are they, are they getting around it then because like tonga is an international side whereas um, Queensland is a representative side, so yeah. so that's why you can play for both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's and that's yeah. how they get around it. And you can see why they do it. I just think that these lads should be told, like like we're not going to know until Saturday who's playing for New South Wales come Sunday, like Sunday morning, like that. That's ridiculous. For, for quite frankly, that is that's ridiculous. I want I want I want to know. I want to know. But how? Yeah, how? Daniel Tupo probably knows what he's doing because in his head he's made a decision and he's told someone. But he should have told someone before Tuesday night. Like, we shouldn't be having a discussion on a Tuesday night. Like, Talakai is in the same situation. He's playing for New South Wales, and he's also playing. For, he's also in the Tonga squad. Like, we should know, as fans, who we're going to see at a weekend if we were going to go to... I mean, we're not, we're not going to these games, but if I'm going to see New Zealand versus Tonga, 
at the weekend, I'm not going to rock up if I'm not seeing Daniel Tupo and Talakai because they're the players I want to go and see. Like if they're my favourite players and I, I can't go and watch them in Auckland, I'm not going to travel to wherever they're playing the second, then wherever they're playing on Sunday to go and watch State of Origin. I'll watch it on. A, I'm not going to travel to the Western Australia to go and watch State of Origin because I live in New Zealand and I want to watch my lads play against like against New Zealand. Do you know what I mean? Like it's a long trek. It's a big. It's a long flight and players aren't going to know like yeah the trip to Auckland to Perth is a, it's a long one and it's not one I'd want, I'd want to do if I didn't know so yeah but it's... can we assume then that they, they're going to play Origin because um, like you know the Tongan squad's a bit bigger so there's more there's less of a chance do you know what I mean like they were always going to be named in the Tongan squad but because they've been named in Origin we can safely assume they're going to play Origin otherwise they wouldn't have been named in the Origin squad yeah, I mean, the, the official teams will be named tomorrow, like from 1 to one to 19, and I think they'll drop a few lads out. But from what I've read, Talakai will be playing for New South Wales, and he'll be in the New South Wales squad, and he's going to choose New South Wales over Tonga, because he'll be a reserve. But Daniel Tupo, despite being named in the five shirt, will be playing for Tonga. But if they knew that already, why have they bothered to name him? Like, why have Tonga, mm. why have Tonga bothered to name Talakai? when they know he's going to be a reserve and not going to be available for selection. like It doesn't make sense. Like, it's, it's, it's just a... You watch Daniel Tupo play two games in one weekend. Back to back. <laughs> yeah, but, but the, flight from, the flight from Auckland to Perth is too long. He's not going to be able to do it. Like If, it was, if they both played in Sydney, yeah, mate, go and do it. Like Go and prove to us that you're the best winger in the world by playing for Tonga on a Saturday and New South Wales on a, on a Sunday and scoring a hat-trick in both games. Go and do that. Like as a, as a sixteen year old kid, you'd be able to go and do that. But as a professional athlete, he's, he, he wouldn't <laughs> yeah, be allowed. Sixteen year old. Yeah, that's what I mean. As a professional, but that that's the issue of player safety that we're not going to get into. Well, we could get into it a little bit if we kind I'm of if we wanted. That but... Daniel Tupac could play two games against <laughs> sixteen. <laughs> I didn't mean him playing. I meant like when he was sixteen against people his yeah. age, he would he would be fine to play a game of rugby league. For four or five days a week at the age of 15. Do you know what I mean? But he wouldn't be able to... This this is probably going to get loads of hate, but because he's a winger, he'll probably get away with it. (laughs) Couldn't do it as a prop, could you? No, you'd be knackered when he come the next day. Um, (laughs) Can you play him one weekend when you're at a touch tournament? (laughs) He doesn't. He plays plays him on a a Tuesday. (laughs) And and he gets a 10-minute break as well, so... Yeah, that's it, 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 I do spend a lot of time on the sidelines. <laughs> that's probably that's that, that's just because he's not very good. Uh, we mentioned <laughs> we <laughs> scored too many. Definitely. Um, I mentioned player safety a little bit, and like it's a little bit disheartening to see the players being picked for more than one squad and international p- fixtures being deemed not as important as state of origin, which is just a rep. Like all being all, yes, it's just a rep game. Like it shouldn't it shouldn't take priority over your country, but it does to some players. And f- like, fine, it's state of origin. Like, who wouldn't want to? I'd 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 rather play state of origin. Like, that's what I'd want to do. Like, I don't care. Like, that's just the way I would think. Um, but we're talking about player safety and like, if they could play two games in two days, would they be allowed? Da, 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 da. Um, something from the BBC and the IRL come out today, and we're not really going to touch on it. We're not going to get into a debate about it. We're just going to talk about it. And we're just going to mention it so people sort of know what's going on and understand what's being done so that things aren't being sort of taken out of, like, taken out of context and everything. Um, transgender swimmers were banned from elite women's races if um, on Sunday if they have gone through any stage of male puberty. Um, how, how they do that, I don't understand. How you understand when a man or when a teenage boy hits puberty when that actually like physically happens that click happens how do you know how do they scientifically know that puberty has started like yes we know as boys that we're going through it but how do the scientists know that does that make sense like to, yeah, does I that think, make sense I think like i read the, the cutoff they've decided is 12 years of age if you've not taken any um okay hormone blockers um before the before the age of twelve. Yeah, before the age of twelve, then it, then you, then that's it. You're written off, okay. and, you, and it's decided that's the that's the cut off. Okay, so that that's, that's a little bit of sort of understanding on what the what they're going to do in 
for FINA, the, sw- the swimming sort of governing body. But transgender rugby players have been rugby league players have been banned from women's internationals, while rugby league's governing body does further research on its inclusion policy. The IRL stated it wanted to balance the individual's right to participate against perceived risk to other participants. Um, Scotland Rugby League's Disability and Inclusion Director Mike Finn resigned from his post over the ruling, which is obviously quite disappointing to see. Obviously, he doesn't agree. Um, he tweeted that the IRL has decided we are not an inclusive sport, and he added that the IRL has yielded to a campaign of hate. Uh, solidarity with all trans players will, all, will be an ally always, uh, concluded Finn. The IRL's move comes as an, obviously a number of sports are considering transgender inclusion. Uh, Lord Coe hinted to the BBC that the sport could follow swimming's example. The, uh, sorry, World Athletics President Lord Coe hinted to the BBC that the sport could follow swimming's example, saying it is set to discuss adopting a new eligibility policy and that fairness is non-negotiable. Uh, the IRL has said it has had considered re- relevant developments in world sport in coming to it, its decision to ban male to female trans women players until it had completed research on its final inclusion policy. The ban will apply to the World Cup in England in October. Um, It is the IRL's responsibility to balance the individual's right to participate, a long-standing principle of rugby league, and at its heart from the day it was established, against perceived risk to other participants and to ensure all are given a fair hearing. The IRL will continue to work towards developing a set of criteria based on best possible evidence which fairly balanced the individual's right to play with the safety of all participants. Um, the decision has obviously drawn criticism from advocates of the transgender rights community and the LGBTQ plus uh, community. Blanket bans on women who are trans playing against other women risks violating international human rights principles of non-discrimination, uh, which requires such qualities to start from a place of inclusion. Uh, said Anna Brown, the CEO of Equality Australia. Um, FINA failed to meet that standard, and the Rugby League's ban also fails to do so, despite it being temporary. Uh, a number of sports have been considering their inclusion policies in recent months, uh, especially after the Olympic Interna- uh, the International Olympic Committee ruled earlier this year that participation policies governing tra- transgender athletes should be determined by each sport depending on its particular characteristics. The IRL said it would work with the nations competing at the Women's World Cup to obtain data in order to inform a transgender policy in 2023. Uh, The chief executive of the Rugby League World Cup, John Dutton, said he welcomed the clarity the IRL decision had provided to competing nations before selecting their squads for the tournament. It is important the IRL consider carefully consider its position on this subject and the Rugby League World Cup understands the need for further research. The transgender women have already been banned from playing at elite level in rugby union's governing uh, body, World Rugby. Um, This comes after Caroline Late played rugby league and union before she transitioned in the late 90s. Um, Oh, sorry, sorry. Caroline Late played rugby league and union before and after she transitioned in the late 90s. And she's now an advocate for trans gender women in sport. She said, further research is great, but I'd also like to listen to people like myself who've been there and done that. I've got heaps of video of me playing and never really injuring anyone. They don't know what the transition is. People don't understand what we go through and how it negates our performance. Once you've, once you've transitioned, you've feminized enough that you're just another player and you're not going to add any more damage to a cisgender women's rugby player. So, and, and then domestically, the RFU policy in England does allow trans women to play under certain testosterone-based conditions. Obviously, there's a lot there. There's a lot going on. There's a lot to sort of read and underline. The fact that people have had feel like they've had to resign from their jobs under the decision is, um, especially in the world of rugby league, is, is obviously disappointing. And I hope that Mike Finn doesn't like take himself away from. I don't know the bloke, but I really hope that he doesn't take himself away from the sport because the more people we have in the sport that understand what's going on, the better. It, it's difficult, isn't it? Because this this is all kicked off mainly because of the 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 trans, there was a transgender swimmer who who a lot of people argued against back uh, over in the USA, and that sort of it kind of yeah. Leah, Leah Thomas became the first trans athlete to win an NCA uh, NCAA swimming title back in March. Um, having transitioned from male to female, so yeah, it it's tough, isn't it? It's, it's difficult. I don't know. I'm not going to ask you what your opinion is, it, but I will ask you on sort of, do you think 
the IRL have sort of made a good decision in terms of where they stand right now? I'm I'm actually really torn because um, I think I think like everywhere in society we're being asked these questions, so it's natural that like it's now sports turn to sort of look and, and decide what's the right thing to do. Yeah. And I, I think it's I think it's an important question to ask, and I'm and I'm glad that we're we're in a society that asks these questions and also um, pe- like keep makes people so accountable that they have to be careful how they even speak about it to make mm-hmm. sure that they actually know what they're talking about and don't just instantly dismiss it. Like yeah, um, I think even ten years ago this wouldn't have been taken as seriously as it has been. I think the fact that we're actually doing research before just making a, a snap decision is a really good sign. I hope that the research is transparent and is fair, and I hope that it's not being done with the aim to just support the like decision that's already been made temporarily. Yeah. Um, but like like you said, we don't really know enough to, to, to say what, what is the right thing to do. I, I, think, I think in our sport particularly, it's a contact sport, so and it is high risk and it is dangerous, and so that is a, a, a bigger sort of um, has a bigger importance to make sure that it's safe. But like like this um, former athlete has said, the, the the hormone blockers might do enough. It might gen, genuinely bring d- mm. down the sort of maximum strength levels of transgender women to mean that they are competing on, on a level playing field. But yeah, I I don't know. I I, I think. It's to, it's sort of come at a bit of a bad time for us, hasn't it? Because we've got a World Cup, so um, I I feel like they're probably were panicking a bit to make this decision quickly, um, and no doubt that's made it harder as well. But yeah, hopefully they I, I don't know. I hope we get it. I hope we get it right, and I hope that um, this doesn't put off transgender people from our spot, and that we can come to we can get out of the other end of this as as an inclusive spot that we are, and that. Um, everyone can enjoy that's you know it's it's, it's really it is really difficult and it's fascinating as well so like i i think anyone who's listening should we should all be going away and looking at it and researching it and, and trying to understand the, the, these people and what and what they go through as, as before we um jump before. to conclusions yeah uh, before i ask you the question toby um it says here the rugby football league are uh, obviously the governing body for professional rugby league in england is holding its own review own review on transgender inclusion, which is apparently nearing completion. So I'm hoping we'll hear more about that before the before the World Cup comes. If we can get sort of the RFL's clarification before the World Cup comes, before the next rugby league season starts for next season, that would be absolutely fantastic. Obviously, we know it's a busy year for a lot of people working at the RFL at the minute. Um, obviously, the middle of the season, the, the international window is just closed. We're going to have the World Cup coming up, so people are going to be doing twice as much work. Toby. For you, is the fact that this is a temporary decision a positive compared to the the feet the Fina's move in swimming, which is a full on straight up ban, or if they've gone through any stage? If you'd asked me just sort of what the same question you asked Robin, I would have said that there's three points like which are positive for me from it, and one's that it is temporary and it can be removed. Two's that you know there's that the, we can measure it we can use science to tell us exactly you know what the right decision is um and the rfl not the rfl the irl by say by saying it's only temporary i hope mean that they're going to look to get their hands on that evidence and then thirdly is the fact that the rfl can make their own decisions about their own competitions yeah 100 percent um so I, I totally if agree review comes through they can just say well we reject this and anything we run will allow for transgender athletes so yeah i think that there are some positives with it and it's quite funny that like funny in a peculiar way to be that the irl seem to have not really thought about this and then all of a sudden read an article online and knee-jerk reactions yeah put in a temporary ban um when it's almost this looks like the rfl are going just wait a bit longer and we've got this research for you and they've got nope banned yeah yeah shut up or whatever and it's a bit yeah it seems a bit like not very well put together by the IRL but uh, like at least it's not completely shutting off the possibility of transgender athletes for the rest of the time or something like that so yeah 100% and and just before we move on and we sort of do what 
what we usually do and go for a, go for a bit of a set of six uh, and do our sort of our predictions for, to round off the episode. I just want to point out that as a podcast, we are pro LGBTQ plus. Like we are all inclusive. We we watch wheelchair rugby league. We we'll watch PDRL. We'll watch uh, LDRL. We'll watch women's rugby league. We'll watch trans rugby league. We don't care. Like we we love rugby league. We love sport, and we'll watch as much of it as we can no matter who's playing it, where it's being played and the quality of it. Like the quality of sport at any level is as good as it can be because the people that play it care and that's all that matters to us. That's all we want to do is we want to go, we want people to enjoy themselves. We want people to have fun and we want people to play at the highest level they can play at for who they are. And if people are going to stop them from playing at that level, then the people that are stopping them have got to do something about it. If they have to go out there and make a transgender tournament to fit these people in i don't think that's the right decision but we will we'll sit here we'll wait and see but we will support the people that want to blow want to play rugby league that aren't allowed to play rugby league whether that's those in greece that weren't allowed to play it before just because they lived in greece like it's those that aren't allowed to play for the lebanon national team because they've got governmental issues like we all support everyone who wants to play rugby league no matter who you are so just so everyone knows aware, yeah, we are on the other side. Rugby league that I think we can be proud of is that we actually have a history of being inclusive. Like we, we, we've got the history to back it up, and I think we're we're a sport that's been sort of like Trump tried to be kept down before in the past by mm. like rugby union and just generally being based in like low socioeconomic communities in the north of England. So I think. I think um, I trust the RFL are doing this right because I think this is actually something that rugby league can be proud of. Um, so I hope that yeah, it, people aren't put off by the, the temporary decision and see past it and see that like yeah, the, the, the community at, at large w- is has, has the exact same sentiment that you just said. Like we yeah. want we want inclusivity and we just love all rugby league regardless yeah. of who plays it. Yeah, if you can make the RFL and the IRL make the right decision. By giving them any inform- any supporting information or any information at all to make the right decision on what you think is the right decision, whether we think whether we agree it's the right decision that you have, if you think that your opinion is correct and you've got any information or stats or figures that can back your your opinion up, get that sent to the right person, no matter who it is. Like get get your word out there. Don't be afraid to sort of speak up and 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 get get like just get, make your voice heard. Like. That's something that rugby is really good at. Like you said, Robin, we're really good at making our voice heard. Um, something that you and me are also really good at is predicting rugby league results, Robin. Uh, Toby, not so much. Um, still still, still six points behind. Um, we, we've, we had a good couple of weeks. I had, a, I had loads set up. I had State of Origin Game 1, Roosters Storm, West Wales Scholars, Italy Island, Wakefield Warrington, Lee Feb. I had all of them lined up a few weeks ago and... We, we didn't do a podcast because I, um, I wasn't very well and then I had a birthday to celebrate. Um, but this week we're back. Robin, I'm so happy that we're good at this because we're, we're well clear. We're both on 54 yeah. points. We're both pretty comfortable. Toby, you've, you've got to step it up, man. You've really got... Me and Rob, set of six behind you. Yeah, you're a whole set of six behind and we're over halfway. We're over halfway through the season now but you have got the World Cup. There's a lot of World Cup games to come and you have some international games as well. First up, then, Warrington, ninth place in Super League, going up against Hull KR, who have just released Josh Reynolds. Hull FC released Josh Reynolds. Yeah, I'm sure they. I'm sure he's gone. I'm sure they released oh, him. Are they playing Hull FC or Hull KR? Uh, Hull FC. Oh, yeah, you said Hull KR. I oh. Uh, I meant I meant Hull FC. Yeah, so. Eight, yeah. yeah, eight uh, today. Oh. It, it, he's, he was gone, officially gone today. So they've saved themselves a lot of money, haven't they? Yeah, what, what actually probably one of the worst Super League marquee signings we've ever seen. Yeah, um, I agree. All things considered. Um, but yeah, um, I mean, I'll take a, I'll take a prediction on it. Uh, Warrington, a crap. Uh, give me hold. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go next on this one. I usually go last on the first one, but I'm gonna go next. I think. The way that having having gone into camp underperforming and then played so well and been upbeat and been like a shining light in the England squad despite the fact it wasn't the best England performance, George Williams has has hit has hit that reset button. 
He's come away from the club that he's not playing well at. He's hit the reset button and he's going to bang. He's going to hit form now. And I don't think Warrington are going to push for the title and they're nowhere near. Like I don't think they're, we're going to have to worry about them getting into a top four spot or anything. But this is where they hit form. And this is where I think George Williams shows us the George Williams that Canberra had. And I'm, for that reason, and also because I'm six points clear of Toby, I'm going to go for Warrington this week. Do you know that's a really good case you put forward there? Um, I think just recently, like Hull FC, I've dropped a, dropped off just a, a tiny bit. But yeah. That doesn't mean I don't think um, I don't think George Williams is, is enough. So yeah, I'm going to stick with Hull FC. Yeah, I just I just think with the addition of Jake Connor being out um, and Tua Mavave also being out for the season, having players that they've relied on for so long and in key positions I think that could be a, a worry and I'd like to see, I'd like to see Hull sort of work around that and use their depth and I'm looking forward to seeing Jamie Shaw at fullback again after a, quite a long time on the wing but I just think this is this is a game where Warrington can kick into gear and just get that losing streak done and get get that sixth win of the season next up a game we spoke about New Zealand versus Tonga um, huge absolutely huge um, I don't think Tonga have lost an international game for a while Um and they're playing in Auckland, which we know is full of Tongans. So yeah. this is this is this is going to be a game played in New Zealand with majority Tongan support. So it's going to be like a home game for Tonga. And I love Tonga. I love I, I love the Pacific nations. I love I love the way they play rugby. I love the fact that they're the players and want to play for Tonga. And and for that reason, I think I'm going to have to go for the, the, the team in red. I completely agree with you. It's that. They're the only nation where the players do not care how many games they have to play in a season to get to, as long as they get yeah. to play for Tonga at the end of it. Um, you would never hear a Tongan player moan that they've played 30 games and now they need to go to a World Cup. You know, you'll never hear, um, you know, you'll never hear of somebody, who, or you'll never see a player play for Tonga and not wear a smile on their face while doing it. Um, and yeah, I think that, yeah, I, I mean. They've been the sort of of the past ten years. They've been the best story in rugby league, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I will, I, will, I I don't think top New Zealand can beat them in which in what is going to feel like an away game uh, for New Zealand. So yeah. Yeah, I I can't disagree with that. I mean, I I could New Zealand are a strong side, so who knows? But based on what we've seen of Tonga over the last couple of years. We've got no reason to um, to write them off. So yeah, Tonga. Nice. We've all all going Tonga. Did you say you were going Tonga on that one as well, Toby? Yeah. Nice. So three from three. Uh, next up, um, we're going back to the bottom of League One, boys. Um, <laughs> it's. I'm going to look at the table before we go anywhere because since we've last been here, we've apologised to London Scholars for being the worst team in professional rugby league, and they've won three games on the bounce. We apologise to West Wales because they beat Cornwall and Cornwall Cornwall are now the worst team in rug, professional rugby league in the Northern Hemisphere. They play West Wales again this weekend and they travel to West Wales. Do they get their first win, Toby? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. It's quite funny because Cornwall seemed to put on their worst performance of the season against West Wales. Yeah. Uh, they've, they actually score points against the other teams. West Wales just didn't show up at all. No. But I can't see. I can't see them. They're not going to beat West Wales in their own in, in, away if they got absolutely battered at home. So, yeah, hey, West Wales. I never thought I'd say that phrase on this. Uh... <laughs> go. That's clipped. Um, yeah, no, I'm going to go for West Wales as well. Like you said, Cornwall probably put in their worst performance of the season against West Wales down in in Penryn a few weeks ago. Uh, probably up to six weeks ago now, a month and a half. Um, yeah, they don't look like they've improved. And I know Neil Kelly's doing his best off the field, but it's not a team of rugby league players. Yes, they've signed Aaron Jones Bishop. Yes, they've got Anthony Mullally. Yes, they've got lads that have played at like amateur, like not amateur level, but sorry, championship level and Super League reserve level. But they're just not there yet, are they? They haven't gelled as a team. They're, 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 they're squash chopping and changing week in, week out. And they're just not ready to to pick up a win yet. Um, Robin, are you, are you going to go with a Cornwall win? Oh, I can't. I think I think I actually did last time. Yeah, I think I did um, as well. It was more of a like you know like I hope it happens. But, um, <laughs> yeah, is it is it 
Like, is it quicker to go by boat from Cornwall <laughs> to the West Wales? Probably is. Like, it it yeah. probably is. It probably is yeah, quicker. It'd be a weird, like, weird, like, away trip, wouldn't it? But, yeah. Um, no. No, West Wales. It's, it's difficult. Like, we've mentioned it before, and we mentioned it again. It's, it's not nice to see the fact that Cornwall haven't won a game yet, and it wasn't nice to see that West Wales have only won one against Cornwall. It is nice to see that London Scholars have won three games now, including, um, I think they beat Hunslet um, the other day, which is a really impressive win for them. But it's nice to see that we won't have, and London Broncos picking up wins as well, like the, the improving the game in, in London again, like these teams have settled themselves down and they've got back on the horse. Uh, next up, game four, probably the biggest game of the weekend, State of Origin, Game 2 in Perth, New South Wales versus Queensland. Billy Slater, Coach of the Year, my friend. Like, I was so ill watching State of Origin, but I was so happy come the end of it. I'd lost I'd lost my voice again. I was coughing up all day, but I don't care. Like, Queensland have gone 1-0 up. They're going to go 2-0 up, and we're going to and we're going to win State of Origin 3-0. Yeah, I Go on, Tubbs. No, I think there's an arrogance that's attached to New South Wales. Like, they were crap for so long. Yeah. And all of a sudden, Cronk, Thurston, Slater retired, Smith retired, and they're like, they were like, yeah, we're going to win for the next 15 years. And now it's like, it's coming back to bite them. So, yeah, I, I don't see Queensland losing this, to be honest. Oh, I love see, it. I think this is brilliant. Uh, don't don't upset yeah. me now. More, more series go to the third game than don't, don't they? Isn't that, isn't that true? Um, uh, yeah, usually, yeah, but to win, they normally... but to do it in, they've they've beaten them in New South Wales, and then they're going away, and they've got to play. They've the game three's in Queensland, so I don't. I think the series is done and dusted. It's just whether they can wrap it up now. I think that's the question. Yeah, I, I I agree with that, but I think that this is this is the game that New South Wales get because uh, the the last game will be in Queensland, won't it? Yeah. It'll probably be at Suncorp. So, so that's a write-off. So this is the only way that New South Wales can salvage any um, any base. So, yeah. Okay. I'm going to go against you. I'm going to pick the blue. <laughs> um, I've changed up a little bit because I've changed game six. Um, but So for this one, I'm going to go to the championship and I'm going to go for, I believe it's fourth versus fifth. Uh, no, it's not. It's fifth versus sixth. Uh, just a point in it in the table between these two sides. Halifax Panthers travel to Cumbria to play the Barrow Raiders, who I think will be out without Jared Samet this weekend because he'll be playing for Malta. So big loss for Barrow, but this is a chance for Halifax to sort of push back into that top four to chase to chase York again and to get like back, back to try and catch up with Batley as well. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna back your boys in blue. I think um, they're both playing blue, Robin. Think- <laughs> yeah, but your boys in blue. No, I got oh, you. That wasn't very clear, was it? No, it wasn't. I'm gonna back the team. Whichever team turns up in blue. Seen as seen as Barrow. Seen as Barrow. Play, seen as Barrow are playing at home. Probably Barrow. But yeah, go go for Halifax. Well, well things have happened. Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah true. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick Halifax, even though it's away from home, and they nice. are probably not playing in blue. <laughs> go on, Rob. Go on, Toby. Go on. It's a, do you know what? It's a very, very, very even matchup. Yeah, it and is. It's that. I think it's at that point where this is the where I need to pull, claw a point back. Um, so I'm going to take Barrow. Um, it's it's not a point you're going to get back. So I'm going to go for Halifax. <laughs> uh, game six. It's it's a game that's really easy for me to pick, and I'm going to go with Bedford Tigers. Um, the women this week, this Sunday at two o'clock welcome Oxford Cavaliers to Putnam Woods um, so if people are down and around the area free entry come and enjoy the weather get yourself watching some Women's Super League South uh, and enjoy the run out um, the reason I'm going for Bedford Tigers is because the massive win they had over Bristol a few weeks ago at Goldington Road and also Oxford Cavaliers got beat 104-0 by London Broncos so um, <laughs> that's that's the reason I'm going for Bedford Tigers this weekend I just wanted to get it in there that they've done also massive shout out to Caroline Colley who made her England debut this weekend, the first ever Bedford Tigers England international, and a massive shout out to Storm Cobain, the best name in rugby league, by the way, the best name in rugby league ever. Second Island international, second try, second win. So big shout out to Storm. Oh, congratulations for putting in a game that we've got no <laughs> chance of predicting correctly. But what do you mean? It's, I've just, I've literally just told you that they're going to win. Like, you don't lose 104 0 and then go and beat a team. Like, it's not happening. Uh, well, 
I guess I'll just use it as a tablet. <laughs> we'll take it off. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Come on, Robin, don't, I, I, don't make gonna, the same mistake. I'm going to back the, the international star-studded team <laughs> and go with uh, your beloved Bedford Tigers. Thank you. I I, I tap my chest. Yeah, really last year, it goes fantastic for Brad. Yeah. I'll support the team again. Oh, I think we've already, so I guess that's what Yeah, I'm I mean, I've got three teams in a row that I've backed, and then I've I've gone with I've gone with Tonga. So that's like my that's like my third international team. I got England, Samoa, Tonga. That's like my order of international teams. Um, I tap I tap my chest there because I usually wear something better no, for no. Tigers. For, no, not Wales. No, no chance. Tell me, but... <laughs> He's not. He doesn't. He doesn't care. Um, I tap my I tap my chest there because I usually wear something Bedford Tigers related when we're doing these. But I'm actually wearing a Telford Raiders vest. So massive shout out to Graham. Telford Raiders. Yeah, massive shout out to Graham Berry who um, who sent me this when I bought a Wigan shirt off of him a while ago when I was collecting rugby shirts. So yeah, yes, I own a Wigan shirt. Um, it makes me sick. Um, but no, <laughs> yeah, it was, <laughs> it was, it was really good, and it was. I wore it when I got home from the Challenge Cup, just because I felt like a glory supporter. Um, <laughs> uh, but no, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we might be back next week. We might be back the week after. Uh, it depends. We'll have a chat and we'll see where we're all at. Thank you very much for joining us. I've been Bradley. That's been Robin. That's been Toby. We've been the Brief. B- brought to you by yeah, we've been the Brief. Uh, brought to you by swinging arms and shoulder charges, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.